Hi everyone, this is tutorial four and uh, we are going to discuss two big topics today uh, which are given in your tutorial sheet. So the first topic is matrix functions. Matrix functions, read down, read, let's write down the title. Matrix functions. This is a relatively easy topic because uh, it's not completely new to you. Let's make a review of the material discussed in the previous tutorial three. Uh, if you remember, we were dealing with um, matrix powers uh, back then, a week ago. So how did we, uh, the task was uh, to find the uh, uh, a to the power of n if you were given a matrix a. What was the method? Let me remind you. So matrix a to the power of n was um, being calculated using this formula, alpha 1, alpha 1 was just coefficient, numerical coefficient, times matrix A plus alpha 0, another coefficient, and times identity matrix of the same size as A. So uh, our task, and after that, our task was uh, to find these numerical coefficients from somewhere and then to substitute them here, and that's how we got this uh, power of matrix A. And how did we calculate these coefficients? It turns out that uh, thanks to uh, Haley Hamilton theorem, this uh, equality, this equation will be uh, will still be true even if you substitute uh, uh, a matrix A by um, its uh, eigenvalue lambda. So let's do it. Instead of A here and here, I'm going to write lambda. Lambda to the power of n is equal to alpha one lambda plus alpha zero, but then identity matrix, uh, matrix in this case should be turned into number one, but no one uh, fancies writing alpha one, alpha zero times one. I think it's better to leave it as it is, looks more beautiful. So this was our method from the last time. From this equation, uh, we could um, find alpha one, uh, alpha zero. It wasn't an equation even, it was a system of equations because we used both lambdas. This matrix two by two always has, uh, uh, two lambdas. And that's how we uh, found these coefficients. It was just a very short review, very concise review of the last material. Why, uh, why did I decide to give you this review? Because our current topic, matrix functions, is closely connected with this uh, topic. So current topic. Current topic will be to the right. It turns out that this time, on the left-hand side of this equation, uh, it won't be uh, this function, which is just one of the functions, a to the power n. It will be a function of the general form, any function, in other words. But uh, the slight difference is that we are not going to write just matrix A here, A times T. The thing is that um, um, it's, uh, this task is very interesting in these applicational terms. So we are interested to apply this method to some uh, real-life problem. And in real-life problem, this matrix A always gets multiply, uh, multiplied by this number T, which is not number, which is parameter time. That is why it's better to get used to this notation from the very beginning. That is why I'm writing not just matrix A, but A times T immediately. Okay, but the good news and the wonderful news is that the right-hand side, it turns out, remains the same, absolutely the same. You can copy it from our last material. So this is just an amazing thing. Even if the uh, function in question looks uh, pretty uh, different, it can be any function. So even uh, the result will have the same form. The only worry, as usual, is to find these coefficients. But you know, another good news is that Kelly Hamilton theorem is still true, even for this situation. And that is why you can use uh, the same technique, just rewriting this uh, equation in terms of lambda rather than a. So all we need to do is to substitute, uh, uh, instead of a here, here, our lambda, and that's it. Lambda t is equal to lambda alpha 1 times lambda, and plus just alpha zero times nothing, times nothing. So this is the method. As you can see, pretty similar, almost nothing new. The news will be that uh, how to organize the uh, process of solution, uh, so solving this task, uh, you know, in a, some sensible way. Okay, so let's take one problem. It's gonna be question, question 1B from our tutorial sheet. Question 1B from our tutorial sheet. And in this equation, you are given matrix A, 
4, 2, minus 1, 1. And you are asked to calculate uh, three things. The first one is to find exponent of a t. Now look at this. As I said before, not a exponent n, but exponent a times t. So this is, will be the first thing. The second thing is sinus of a times t again, a times t. And even the third thing, cosinus of the same expression. So you are asked to calculate three different functions. But you know, it's better, in this case, it's, uh, it would be such a terrible idea to go through every um, assignment uh, one by one separately. I think it's a much better idea to prepare this um, expression for uh, the general function, you know, first. And then just to substitute our, um, our functions after that, it will be much, much nicer because otherwise it would mean that we we'll, would have to go for the same procedure, for the same steps three times in a row. No, no, thank you. No one fancies to it. Okay, so let's forget about this concrete for function. Let's pretend that we are dealing with the general function, f of at. Just to find uh, the expression for it. This was be our first and ultimate task. Okay, but first of all, judging by these formulas, we need to find lambda eigenvectors. Oh, sorry, eigenvalues of our matrix. Okay, let's start. There's nothing simpler than this. So we are subtracting lambdas from diagonal elements and set it uh, equal to zero. Mm -hmm. Five, uh, four minus lambda times one minus lambda plus two is equal to zero. Then we have, um, uh, let me do it here, lambda squared minus five lambda plus six is equal to zero. And uh, the roots are two and three. It's very easy just to guess these roots, even without using this formula with this discriminant. Okay, so this has been done. What next? Next, we need to turn to this equation. I better copy it here. F of lambda t is equal to alpha 1 times lambda plus alpha 0. So our next step is to find alpha 1 and alpha 0 from this equation. But you know, we uh, as uh, just last, uh, just uh, like in the last tutorial, um, uh, we have two unknowns here, alpha 1 and alpha 0. That is why we need to get to obtain two equations for it and form the system of linear equations. Only in this case, we will be able, we would be able to solve this uh, task. Okay, but we already have two lambdas. Lambda one is equal to two. I'm copying him here. And lambda two is equal to three. So we can substitute these lambdas uh, to this equation one by one. Let's start with lambda is equal to two. So uh, when, uh, wherever you see lambda, you put two there. So f of two t, is equal to alpha 1 times 2 plus alpha 0. Uh -huh. And now we need to substitute 3 instead of lambda. Pretty similar thing. f of 3t is equal to alpha 1 times 3 plus alpha 0. So we are done with the system. The only thing which looks pretty annoying, maybe you already noticed that, that the left-hand sides are not numbers anymore, are not numerical coefficients. These are, these are just some general expressions. So some people might find it very annoying because it means that um, more simplifications, more, you know, more writing will be involved. But what can you do? What can you do? It's not, it's not so terrible after all. So now the question arises as to how to solve this problem uh, without Gaussian elimination, of course. So the easiest thing is to notice that if you subtract this uh, first equation from the second one, these guys, alpha zeros, will cancel out in the right-hand side and will immediately find alpha 1. So it looks like this is the best way to start with. Okay, let's, uh, let's subtract. So we are subtracting the uh, left-hand side first. And then these two guys will be the like terms, will give us just alpha 1. Alpha 1 times 1 is just alpha 1. And these guys, as I said, get canceled out. Oh, so we already have alpha 0. Very easy. As for alpha, alpha 1, sorry. Alpha one. As to how to get alpha zero, we can use uh, any of these um, uh, equations. It can be either the first equation or the second equation. Let's use the first equation, for example. So we can express alpha zero first from the first equation and then substitute our result. Now, oh, no, I need to set up everything in a beautiful way. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Looks nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want everything to be in the on the screen. Okay, so let's uh, look at the first equation. 
we can uh, write, uh, we can express alpha zero from here. It will be f of 2t minus 2 times alpha 1 here. So I just expressed alpha 1, alpha 0 from here. Okay, f of 2t gets copied. And now we can substitute alpha 1 here, which we just calculated. f of 3t minus f of 2t. And now it's time to do a little bit of simplification, but I don't think it's a big problem for you. If you perform this multiplication, and if you find like terms, you will discover that we got what? We got 3 times f of 2t minus 2 times f of 3t. So this is alpha, alpha 0, and let's put it into the frame. Mm -hmm. So it's been done. So this time, the only difference with our previous tutorial is that this time alpha 1 and alpha 0 are not numbers anymore. They are just some expressions. Not very terrible, not very long one, but nevertheless, not numbers anymore. Okay, what was our next step uh, last time? Next step was to get back to matrix equation. So this was the equation for lambdas. And as you remember from the very beginning of our tutorial, we need to rewrite this in the matrix form and substitute our results there. Okay, so let me copy this equation here. So f of a t is equal, I'm just copying now, alpha 1 times matrix alpha, uh, a matrix A, sorry, plus alpha 0 times identity matrix. Okay, so we can substitute everything. But uh, let's not substitute alphas immediately because it will it won't be very convenient. So let's substitute matrix matrices first. So this is matrix A substituted here, and here we need to write identity matrix of the same size. So we can do this simplification first, this um, um, operation over operations over matrices, and then after that we will be able to substitute our alphas. Okay, let's try and concentrate. So it will be for alpha 1 plus alpha 0 from here. So this is the left top element. Okay, let's move to this element. It will be minus alpha 1 plus nothing plus 0. Mm -hmm. So let's eat with this element with the first row. So what about this element? It will be 2 alpha 1 plus nothing because plus 0 here. And finally, the last element will be alpha 1 plus alpha 0. Uh -huh. So this is like a general expression for our result. But I think it's a good idea to uh, substitute our alphas, even though they look like big expressions, but never then this, I think it can be done easily. Because after that, it will be very, very easy for us to go for every single function out of three, given in the assignment, and just substitute it here. So it's worth while doing. So four times, where's my alpha one? Alpha one was in the previous page, but so I'm trying to squeeze it here, minus f of 2t, uh -huh. and plus alpha 0 from here. Oh, I'm running out of space, I'm afraid. Oh, yeah, 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 very bad. Minus 2f of 2t. So this was the top left element, and there's no room for the second element, uh, the same row. Oh, what a pity. It will be very easy. Ah, my, minus alpha 1, I'm just rewriting here, because I don't have space for it. Okay, this element will be 2 alpha 1, Ah, my writing looks very ugly. And this element, which is um, correspond to this uh, location, will be written here. So alpha 1, alpha 1 is f of 3t minus f of 2t. Uh -huh. And plus alpha 0 is still almost on the screen. Alpha 0 is here. Plus 3f of 2t minus 2f of 2t. Uh-huh. So maybe you would be you will be better at organizing things on your in your writing because I have uh, my um, handwriting is too big I'm afraid that is why I run out of space but okay it's time to finish now so if we uh, perform this um, uh, you know simplification what do we uh, what do we get let's start with f of three t so we have coefficient four here and uh, I'm very I'm very you know, careless. So this should be 3t. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Very careless handwriting. And the same here, 3t should be. Oh, sorry for being so careless. Okay, so f, uh, f of 3t has coefficient 4 here and minus 2 here. That is why it will be plus 2 times f of 3t. And the similar thing should happen to the second uh, term. Minus 4 f of 2t plus 3 will be just minus f of uh, 2t. Uh -huh. 
So this is the element in the top left corner. This guy was just minus alpha 1. It's very easy. You know, I put this bars just in case, not to make things so basic. So here we need to write minus alpha 1. It's very easy. Minus f of 3t plus f of 2t. Uh -huh. So 2 times alpha 1 is pretty easy as well. So we need to put coefficient 2 in front of each expression minus 2f of 2t. And to get the last element, we can uh, look at our preparations here. So this and this are like terms, which will give us minus f of 3t. And the remaining uh, terms will give us plus 2f of 2t. So this is the end to our sufferance. So this is our result. This is our result which we can use just substituting. Uh, and now we can uh, get back to our assignment finally. So this is like a template. This is like a template. And all uh, which is left for us to do is just to substitute our concrete fun functions into this template. So it's the end of uh, you know this very uh, long uh, simplification. OK, let's get back to our, I'm trying to leave it on the screen, this result, this very important result. Okay, so let's get back, back, uh, get back to our assignment. The first assignment was to find, um, so f of a t, which was given uh, in the first assignment, was exponent of a t. To be honest, uh, I prefer to rewrite it in the in this form, e to the power of a t. It looks more, you know, it looks much better this way. Okay, but you know what? Uh, uh, how uh, do we deal with this f uh, f of 2t? How uh, can uh, are we allowed to substitute numbers here instead of matrix A? Of course, the answer is yes. I forgot to mention about it, but it's just the right time to do it. So your functions function looks like this in this example. It means that you can easily substitute matrix A as usual with our lambda or with any any number, not necessarily lambda, just with any number. But let's write down lambda instead of this. e to the power of lambda t. So this is how we are going to deal with these terms, which are f of 3t, f of 2t, and so on. OK, let's start. So our result, e to the power of e t, will look like what? We are using this template and substituting our information here. So 2 times what? What is f of 3t? You need to substitute 3t here. So it will be e to the power of 3t minus f of 2t, which will be e to the power of 2t. Nothing fancy. OK, I, I'll put the vertical bars again because my writing looks a bit messy, I'm afraid. OK, so here we have minus uh, f of 3t. It will be minus e to the power of 3t and analogically plus e to the power of 2t. Uh -huh. Let's move to the second row. We have 2e to the power of 3t minus 2e to the power of 2t. And finally, minus e to 3t plus 2 times e to the power of 2t. So that's it. So we are finished with the first task. We did calculate e to the power of et. OK, what was our next task? The second task, let's going to use some colors. So it was our first task. And then the second task was to uh, calculate sinus, sinus of the same expression, sinus of AT. So this time our function looks like this. In this case, we need to use this formula again, this general template, but substitute uh, what? So for example, if you're dealing of f of lambda t, you can substitute sinus of lambda t. This is a, the same idea again. So let's start doing it. So this time we are calculating we are calculating sinus of at, it. Okay. We are looking at this template and substitute uh, and expand f of 3t, f of 2t. Okay, let's start. So this will be 2 times, this time it will be sinus 3t minus sinus 2t. So this was our first element. This will be minus sinus 3t plus sinus 2t. Oh, I'm running out of space minus sinus 3t plus um, sinus 2t. Okay, the second row, the second row will be 2 sinus 3t and 2 sinus 2t. And finally, this guy will be minus sinus 3t plus 2 sinus 2t. So that's it. 
as you can see, uh, the task is becoming quite boring, you know, since uh, since you get this template, since you got this template. Because all we need to do, we need just to substitute our concrete function into this general expression. So I think it's better to skip the last function, which was cosine of at. I think it's pretty boring. You can, ah, you can actually even rewrite this result, uh, look at this result, at the previous result, and substitute cosine here. Ah, okay, let's do it because it's too easy. Cosine of at will be just rewriting the previous result, substituting a sinus by cosinus. Okay, let's do it because it's so easy. 2 times cosine 3t minus cosine 2t. I just rewrote this. Okay. Minus cosine 3t plus cosine 2t. I'm rewriting this expression, but changing sinus for cosinus. Okay, and the last row will be so here 2 cosine of 3t and minus 2 cosine 2t. Uh huh. And finally, minus cosine 3t plus 2 cosine 2t. So we are finished at last. So as you can see, this task is not, uh, is a little bit daunting in terms of all these uh, simplifications, all these, you know, multi, uh, you know, transformations and so on. But immediately after you get this general form of your answer, so after that, things are becoming pretty easy and even boring. All you need to do is you just substitute this f, general function f with your concrete function so bear in mind so this is the best strategy strategy as to how to deal with this problem to find the general uh, form first and only after that substitute concrete functions especially if you have if you are asked to do uh, several functions it will be certainly a uh, time saver Okay, so we are finished with the first topic. I hope that you were inspired uh, by the thought that it's pretty similar to the previous material, so it was not, you know, seriously new. But as for the second topic, yeah, it's quite new. It will be about quadratic curves. Quadratic curves. Quadratic curves. So I split... Uh, I split this uh, topic into two uh, subtopics. The first subtopics, let's call it 2A, will be just like an introduction, like a reminder. Canonical curves. Canonical curves. Canonical curves. I think that you're pretty familiar with these curves already from your from high school partly and from your previous course of linear algebra. But now it's absolutely uh, uh, essential to remind you about them because our task will be to um, convert our general curve to this canonical curve, uh, curve. That is why you need to be absolutely clear about what these canonical curves are. I'm trying to make less blurry mm -hmm. okay so let's start luckily you have to you'll have to deal only with the three canonical curves not so many okay the first uh, curve is x1 squared plus x2 squared is equal to r squared uh-huh uh, uh, i think that you know uh, you noticed immediately that i changed the uh, old notation of variables which was x and y I change them for x1 and x2. It's going to be much more convenient uh, when we discuss this topic because uh, this x is uh, representing the old system of coordinate. And um, in this topic, we will have to find a new coordinate system, which will be very um, convenient to denote it as y1, y2. That is why uh, we change this notation. So what is this equation? Uh, this is a, an equation of the circle, canonical circle, where a R is a radius of this circle, radius of this circle. So if you come across this equation, it means that uh, you need to uh, draw a coordinate system. And the center of the circle is in the origin of the coordinate system. And radius is A. So you can mark uh, R here, minus R here, R here, minus R here. And then just to connect these points, and this will be the circle. So that's it. Nothing fancy to discuss. I don't, I don't think it's even a good idea to give you some example because it's too easy. Let's move to the second uh, curve first. Uh, ne next. And then uh, here we can uh, discuss some examples. It will be much more interesting maybe here. Okay. So this time it will be... Oh, so I forgot to write the name circle just in case. Circle. So this, was, uh, this uh, equation was representing circle. Now the second equation will be 
pretty similar, x1 squared, but the difference is that it's divided by some coefficients, plus x2 squared again, but divided by b squared is equal to 1 this time. Mm -hmm. So what is this uh, curve? This curve is famous ellipse. ellipse. So uh, you can immediately see the difference. So um, we uh, first of all, we have 1 on the right-hand side, and uh, every uh, every uh, variable, every term gets divided by these uh, numbers, by these uh, numerical coefficients. But how to draw ellipse if you come across this uh, equation? It turns out that this a and b, they have a quite explicit um, geometrical meaning. Let's discuss it. So this is our coordinate system. So a should be marked uh, uh, along x1 axis, so a minus a. So the center of the future ellipse will be here in origin again, but these are going to be uh, the vertices of our future ellipse. And as for b, b should be marked here and here along x2 axis. How not to confuse them? You know, you can immediately um, notice that a is located just under x1. That is why a should be marked along x1 axis and so on. And so after that, you need just to connect these points, and this is going to be ellipse. It looks a little bit ugly in my drawing, but that's fine, that's fine. We are going through an example now. So let's ask, let us consider some example, just to illustrate how, to, how, you, how you need to deal with this economic equation. Okay, example one, just example, just example. So let's imagine that you came across uh, equation like this, 4x1 squared, plus 9x2 squared is equal to 36. Mm -hmm. And you are asked to draw this curve. First of all, you start comparing it with our uh, standard form, and you realize that it does look like ellipse a little bit, but not completely. Uh, the, uh, the main difference is that you need to have one here, and you need to have this a and b. So how to provide uh, one? In the first case, there's nothing easier than this. You need just to divide both sides of this equation by 36. And you immediately get x1 squared divided by 9 plus x2 squared divided by 4 this time is equal to 1. Ha <laughs> ha. So this does look like um, canonical equation of ellipse. Of course, you recognize this guy. This is a squared, this a squared, and this is base, b squared. So a squared is uh, 9, that is why a itself is 3, and b is equal to 2. So now we are quite prepared to draw this ellipse. Okay, so let's draw the coordinate systems, x1, x2. So we need to mark 3 minus 3 along x1 axis, 3 minus 3. And b should be marked on the vertical axis, 2 minus 2. And then we just connect these points, and this is our ellipse, canonical ellipse. Um, in our case, in this particular example, the ellipse is elongated uh, along x1 axis, but sometimes it could be elongated along this axis, uh, if a, b, b uh, is bigger than a, for example, of course. But it doesn't matter. The main thing is that um, uh, this coordinate, um, uh, this axis, coordinate axis, x1, x2, are always uh, um, you know, axis of symmetry for this ellipse. Ellipse is symmetrical in relation to these coordinates, coordinate axis. Okay, so it was pretty easy. Now it's time to move to uh, the second, or to the third curve already, third and the last curve, which is hyperbola. Hyperbola number three will be hyperbola. Hyperbola. Unfortunately, things are not so easy with hyperbola because it has two canonical equations. Let's draw these arrows to show that I'm going to give you two canonical equations. Let's write them down first, and then we can discuss them. So x1 squared divided by a squared is usual. The beginning is the same, but minus, minus changes everything. So uh, uh, the equation of ellipse had plus here, and the equation of hyperbola had minus here, the only difference. But this uh, difference is crucial, of course. Immediately the curve becomes uh, the curve becomes absolutely different. And what about the second equation? The second equation is just actually looks pretty similar to this, but in the left hand side the terms just get swapped. So x2 squared divided by square b squared goes to the first place, and this guy 
this term will be the second one. So this is the difference between these two canonical equations. But the thing is that um, hyperbolas will be different corresponding to each equation. That is why I'm going to go through both examples. I'm going to give you an idea of how to write, how to draw both these hyperbolas. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do uh, to write them, uh, to draw them simultaneously. So the first step is always to set up the coordinate system here and here. So two hyperbolas at the same time. Mm -hmm. The second step is to mark these a's and b's. As usual, I a is under um, under x1. That is why a should be marked a and minus a, a should be marked along this uh, x1 axis. Uh, maybe I better use some other color. So this is a and this is minus a. And the same should be done here. No difference so far. A minus A. A minus A. Okay. And the same thing should be done to B. B should be marked uh, along X2 axis. B minus B here. B minus B here. Mm -hmm. So we are performing the same steps, doing the same actions. Now, why do we need these guys, A's and B? In the case of ellipse, we just connected them, and it was the end of the drawing. But now it's uh, things are much more different. So we need these uh, points, need these two uh, four points, just to uh, build, just to draw a rectangle this time, going through these points. Rectangle here, rectangle here. Uh -huh. Then what next? Why do we need these rectangles? The question, natural question arises. It turns out that we are interested in diagonals of these rectangles. Let's draw diagonals here, diagonals here. What do they give us, these diagonals? They should be expanded indefinitely, here and here indefinitely, and the same here. I'm expanding these diagonals. So they are becoming like straight lines, infinite straight lines. And the thing is that these uh, straight lines are actually asymptotes of these uh, hyperbolas. As you may remember, uh, the uh, hyperbola have two uh, asymptotes. So we draw, we drew um, asymptotes just now. So so far everything was uh, pretty similar. No difference, you know, in these two hyperbolas. And now is the time for difference finally. So. Now we need to uh, mark uh, the um, to draw uh, vertices of this hyperbola and look at this. The, uh, this is where the difference comes. So in the first case, uh, these vertices will be here, or here. These are two vertices, and in this case, they will be along x2 axis. So note this difference. Note this difference. And now after that, we immediately can draw parabola uh, hyperbola. Hyperbola has two branches. So in this case, it will be like uh, left branch and right branch. While in this case, it will be upper branch and the lower branch. So this is a quite a big difference, as you may uh, see. Of course, these are different hyperbolas. But how not to get mixed up these two cases uh, in terms of these uh, vertices, where to put these vertices? You know, uh, you can use this trick. Uh, so, if you, as you can see, uh, this term here, this term here has a plus sign in front of it. This is a positive term, unlike this, uh, as opposed to this, which is negative. So, positive term uh, corresponds to x1. That is why your vertices will be marked along x1 axis. Whereas here, this guy, this term has uh, is positive, and that is why, x, which is x, x2, and that is why vertices are located along x2 so it's quite a, it's just a small trick how to memorize these things how not to confuse them okay but now so we uh, it was the end of introduction uh, it was part one or two a now it's time it was a small revision of the material I studied before now we need to switch to the next part which is going to be quite long to be let's call it to be general form general form general or general form of quadratic curve of quadratic curves of quadratic curve curve and how to convert it to uh, canonical converting converting it to canonical curve to canonical form canonical 
the canonical curve, canonical form. Maybe it's better to write it, canonical form. Mm -hmm. This looks like quite a big task, but of course, as usual, we will try to sleep this, uh, to um, split this algorithm into many uh, sub steps so that everything will be clear for you as to what exactly to do in the very next step. But the first, uh, in the first place, you need to get a general idea. Why do we need this uh, thing at all? And what is general equation? So let's start with general uh, equation, general form or quadratic cur curve. How does it look like? A times x1 squared plus B times x2 squared plus 2C times x1, x2 is equal to 1. So this is a general form of a quadratic curve. What is the difference um, between uh, the uh, canonical curves? Probably you already uh, you know, spotted this difference. The difference lies in this term. There was no this term in our canonical curves. If you get rid of this term, uh, how do you, I don't know, you can read it. Get rid of it this way. You will immediately uh, see that oh, this is canonical uh, canonical equation. It could be either hyperbola or ellipse or maybe a circle hiding behind this equation. So this is quite an annoying thing, annoying term, and we want to get rid of it. Because if you look at the general form, you will never guess what, what sort of curve is hiding behind this uh, curve. You know, it's absolutely impossible because you, you have no uh, tools to guess it. You need to uh, deal, you need to have a, a canonical, uh, canonical form uh, to say, uh, to uh, to determine which curve uh, is represented here. So our task is to get rid of this uh, uh, term, how to get rid of it, only if you set up a new coordinate system. So in this coordinate system, everything like frozen, you can't change this equation. It's just, you know, a nature, like a nature, you can't change the nature. And that is why you need to find a new coordinate system in which this term will disappear. Uh, but you know, then uh, I need to, uh, to draw some picture you to illustrate this idea. So it turns out that let it be an ellipse behind this uh, curve, you know. It means that this ellipse is not elongated along, it doesn't have um, axis, x1 axis uh, uh, symmetry. So it means that uh, ellipse was rotated. So that is why if you rotate the ellipse um, along uh, around origin, in this case, uh, this uh, equation becomes so ugly. And that is why, what do we need to do? We need to find new coordinate system, which is obviously looks like this. This is y1, this is y2, or maybe y always it could be y2, y1, it doesn't matter. So in this coordinate system, uh, the, uh, uh, um, the equation of ellipse uh, will take a very beautiful form, which is called canonical form. So this is our general task as to how to, what to do, what are we doing at all? What is the purpose of this task? What is the goal? Okay, but to give you even a better idea before giving you this uh, algorithm, step-by-step uh, -step algorithm, I want to draw you a little di diagram to give you some general idea of our uh, formulas, concepts, which are going to use now. So now you know at least one thing, that x1, x2 represent the old coordinate system, not very good coordinate system. But we need to find the new coordinate system, uh, y1, y2, in which the ellipse uh, um, equation will look more beautiful, more canonical. Okay, let's do some diagram. So let's imagine that we, this was our general form in the old coordinate system. So general form look like, again, ax1 squared plus uh, b times x2 squared. In other words, I'm just rewriting this general form here. And it was all happening. Uh -huh. and the drawing corresponding to this example looks something like this. Let it be ellipse. It could be hyperbola, of course, but let it be el ellipse. Uh -huh. So it was rotated ellipse. And you know what? So x1, x2 was our old coordinate system. Uh -huh. Old coordinate system. Everything is clear. But you know what? Um, do you remember these vectors, famous vectors, i and j? i and j. These were basis vectors. For vector space, which were associated always with this um, uh, axis, x1 and x2. Uh, vector i was a unit vector uh, whose, um, whose direction coincides with the correction of x1 and uh, the same for x2. So i and j was the old basis as well, old basis. This information is very essential, that is why I'm drawing this diagram for you. Okay, and now what is our dream? Our dream is to find new coordinate systems. So 
from the old things, we want to switch to some new things. So in this new coordinate system, our equation will be canonical. Canonical, it means beautiful, in other words. So our equation that look, uh, we will get rid of this guy, but these coefficients a and b, they will change, of course. Let's denote it some in some other way. Oh, so for example, capital A plus capital B x two squared and is equal to one. Maybe uh, capital is not a very good idea to no for notation because we usually denote matrices by capital. Oh, I don't know what to do. Okay, let's put some, you know, some sign here. It's just a temporary notation. Okay, so it means that what we, do we want to do? We want to find a new coordinate system. Let's rewrite this ellipse here once again. I'm not lazy about doing this thing. And we want to find this beautiful coordinate system. Uh, uh -huh. This y1 and y2. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty obvious that in this coordinate system, uh, the uh, equation of ellipse will look very beautiful. Okay, so it means, looking at this picture, it means that we want to find these new vectors. New vectors. Instead of i and g, we want to find vectors, let's denote them like e1 and e2. Because these vectors will determine the direction of these um, excesses. So let's write down this. So y1 and y2, these are new variables, new coordinates. And y1 and y2 will be new bases new basis mm -hmm. so what we want to do we need to find to switch from the old basis ij to new basis uh, e1 e2 because if you uh, if you manage to find this new basis we will immediately uh, know how to draw the picture okay so this is pretty clear now what we are doing at least the goal of this algorithm this task but you know what we will have to deal with uh, matrix p matrix p this is model matrix model matrix when we uh, switch from one from old coordinate system to the new coordinate system we always have a model matrix but in, la in our last tutorial in the previous tutorial we denoted by capital m do you remember this time we are going to denote it by p capital p okay this is the only difference so model matrix if you remember um, has columns and each column represents the coordinates of these new uh, basis vectors okay and so to make our diagram uh, absolutely full, uh, you know, complete, uh, we, uh, you're always asked to not only to find this new coordinate system, but also to give expressions of as to how to express new coordinates in terms of old one to calculate many things. Okay, let's write this, um, uh, this formula as well from the very beginning. So it's like a theoretical introduction to our topic. Okay, so let's denote. So in the uh, in the old coordinate system, you have coordinate you had coordinates x1, x2. Let's denote it like a vector x for convenience. And the same here in the new coordinate system, you are dealing with y's, and let's denote it thus just like vector i. And now we can uh, write down the relationship between them. So this is a very famous formula. So the old coordinate x is equal to matrix p model matrix times new coordinates times new coordinates so this is a relationship between them but many people prefer to express y in terms of x because it sounds maybe a little bit logical we know we, we want to know how to express new coordinates from the old one there's nothing easier than this you you just need to solve this expression this matrix equation for y so it will be p transposed times x I'm not going to uh, explain to you why we write p uh, transpose here instead of p uh, minus one and inverse. It's uh, all uh, it was all explained to you uh, in the lecture. So please go back to the lecture if you have any questions. My task was to remind you about this material and to give you a diagram so that you you have a, a big uh, deep understanding on what's what's going on. Okay, so now it's time to give you this uh, algorithm. How to do it step by step? How to find these new coordinates, new vectors? maybe first and so on so let's write down algorithm algorithm oh, I'm running out of them. okay algorithm algorithm it consists of um, I I split it into eight small uh, steps so first of all we have this expression a x1 squared plus b x2 squared plus 2c times x1 x2 is equal to 1 mm -hmm. And our task, and usually uh, when they give you 
examiners. When examiners uh, give you uh, this task, they always ask you not only to find this canonical term, uh, canonical coordinate system, y1, y2, but also uh, give these expressions uh, of how uh, y uh, could be recalculated using the old coordinate. So this is our goal as well. We have two goals, actually. And sometimes they don't ask you to draw the picture, uh, to draw, uh, to plot the picture. But I'm, I'm going to do it anyway. That is why I include it into my algorithm. So the first step, the first step, step will be to write down the matrix of this um, general form. Look at this. Matrix look like this. So A goes here, B goes here, and C, C here. It's very easy to write this matrix looking at the left-hand side of this equation. Look at this. A is coefficient in front of x1 square. It always goes to the top left corner. Uh, similarly, B is in front of x2 square, so it goes to this corner. And uh, finally, this coefficient, it was uh, written as 2C. It's not accidental. It was uh, done deliberately. So you divide it by 2 to get C and put C and C here. So there's nothing uh, easier than this. Then we can rewrite our equation in a matrix form, by the way. So it could be written. It's not absolutely necessary for uh, our task, but it's just interesting to rewrite it. So you need to write a row of our knowns x1, x2. Then you uh, can write your matrix A, C, C, B. And finally, the same. Uh, the same unknowns but uh, organized in a column. And so this will be the same equation but written in the matrix form, which is more convenient. Okay, so this was our first step. It was actually about writing out this matrix, nothing else. The next step will be to find eigenvalues of this matrix. Uh -huh. We know how to do it. We've done it million of times. Maybe not million, but <laughs> of course it was a duration. Okay, the next step will be to find eigenvectors f2 f1 f2 uh, this time i'm denoting them by f1 f2 i'll tell you uh, the reason later so eigenvectors eigenvectors is step three then the fourth step is to normalize them normalize them normalize these vectors normalize them it means that you need uh, to make um, unit vectors out of them you know, probably you remember the formula. So F1, if you want to normalize vector F1, you need to divide every coordinate by uh, the length of the vector. And that is why I used this notation before, F instead of E, because E uh, will be our ultimate vectors, uh, unit vectors, which why we are going to draw our coordinate system. And similarly, E2, F2 divided by length of F2. Mm -hmm. So this was our step four. Aha, uh -huh. and I forgot to mention you that actually we were ready to write canonical form after uh, the second step. Once you know this lambda 1, lambda 2, you immediately are ready to find, uh, to write this. Um, ah, let's, uh, let's um, change our, uh, you know, order. So this is going to be step 3, actually. This is be step 4, and this is 5. Because it's quite logical to write down this uh, canonical form immediately after lambda, uh, lambda after you obtained lambda one, lambda one. So sorry for this mess a little bit, but maybe it's even better. You know, making mistakes always draws attention to these uh, things. So maybe it was for the better. So step three, uh, after which uh, comes after step four, uh, step, step two, of course. It turns out that canonical form form looks like this: lambda one times y one squared. Lambda 2 times y2 squared is equal to 1. So this is canonical form of our equation. We were ready to write it in, uh, down immediately after we calculated these lambdas, these eigenvectors. So do you remember when I was giving you this big diagram, I mean, denoted these um, coefficients uh, like A and B uh, capital, which wasn't a very good notation. But it turns out that these guys are actually these uh, eigenvectors, eigenvalues. Okay, so we performed step five now, <laughs> little bit of confusion. And what about step six? Step six, um, step six, uh, I don't know how to organize things. Uh -huh, I need this paper actually. So step, step six. Step six, you can plot the curve. Plot the curve already. Plot the curve. Plot the curve. 
So I'm going here when I'm uh, describing the algorithm view, I, I'm going to give you only the rough idea how, how to do it. So you had this old coordinate system, x1, x2, and you uh, had these vectors i and g. I'm not going to plot them here uh, to avoid the mess. So what, what's now? Now you got these vectors e1 and e2, right? And you know uh, uh, their meaning. They determine the, um, the direction of this new uh, coordinate axis. So what we need to do now, we can plot these two vectors, e1 and e2, e1, e2. And then we can expand them, and this is going to be our new coordinate system. So this is going to be y1, this is going to be y2. And after that, we are ready to plot our curve. Maybe it was ellipse, maybe it was hyperbola, it doesn't matter. When you start uh, uh, plotting this curve, you need to look only to this, uh, at, to only at this new coordinate system, just completely ignoring the old coordinate system. Not to be, no, so probably it was like this. Something. Okay, and then the seventh step, but it's not the end of the task. As I said before, we all always need to write the expression of uh, new coordinates in terms of uh, old coordinates. And to this end, we need to write down this matrix P. So, but it is nothing easier than this. Matrix P consists of two columns. This column, and the first column is vector E1, its coordinate, and the second column is vector E2. So this is our model matrix. And the last step, finally, you can write this expression. So these are new coordinates, is equal to P transposed uh, times last coordinates. And it's better to expand expand this um, uh, this expression uh, substituting your information. So, for example, instead of vector y, you can substitute this column. Instead of vector, instead of matrix, you need to write concrete matrix. And instead of x, vector x, you expand this uh, again. And maybe even to do multiplication. Judging by tutorial sheet. Uh, they prefer to expand this expression, but it's not quite an easy, uh, quite a bit, uh, quite a bit difficult task, so we can do it. Okay, now it's time to apply this algorithm to our concrete uh, task. I don't know which one to choose. I don't know if I prefer anything or not. So, so, I think we can, we can have... Oh. Uh -huh. So it's a question to be. I chose question to be. So in question to be, we are given this general equation. So x2 plus 7x2 squared is equal to 1. And we are asked, and actually, uh, every time you are given some task, uh, please read carefully the assignment. So for example, uh, the algorithm I just uh, described to you, it's uh, quite a complete algorithm. I even included plotting the curve into this algorithm. But more often than not, they don't ask you to plot the curve, especially during test uh, exams, because it can be quite time consuming. Sometimes they do, sometimes, sometimes they don't. So when you uh, arrive at the test, which is next week, just read carefully what you are asked to do. So for example, if you read carefully this tutorial assignment to this tutorial, uh, question two, you quickly uh, notice that they don't ask you to draw, to plot the curve, so don't do this. Don't waste your time. So, uh, but they ask you to do two things. They ask you to find this canonical form of your curve, which is uh, step three in our algorithm, or oh, step three, yeah. And they also uh, ask you to give expressions uh, of the new uh, variables wise in terms of old variables. Aha! Uh -huh. So this is step eight in our algorithm. So they explicitly ask you to do only two things. Don't do more. You will just waste your time. Okay, and you won't get additional mark for this, of course, obviously. Okay, so let's start applying our algorithm. The first step of algorithm says that write down this matrix of this quadratic form. Okay, let's look at the equation this equation and compare it with the general form. We usually have coefficient a in front of x squared. It means that our a is equal to 1. And this is coefficient uh, b usually uh, is located in front of x2 squared. So our b is equal to 7. And as for this term x1, x2, it usually has coefficient 2c in front. So 2c is equal to 4. And it, it will obviously give us c is equal to 4. So now we can organize our matrix. 1 goes here, 7 goes here, and our c goes here. So this is our matrix. This is our matrix of our uh, quadratic form. 
Okay, the next step is to find lambdas. Find lambdas. Okay, we know how to do it. 1 minus lambda 4, 4, 7 minus lambda is equal to 0. Mm -hmm. Now we need to calculate them. 1 minus lambda, 7 minus lambda, minus 16 is equal to 0. Ah, I decided to save a little bit of time. Let me give you roots immediately. Lambda 1 is equal to ah, minus 1. And lambda 2 is equal to 9. So these are the roots of this quadratic equation. I decided to save a couple of seconds. Maybe not a couple, maybe 10 or 15 seconds. Okay, the next step, aha, uh -huh. and do you do remember I confused the order of steps in my algorithm. Uh, so uh, here comes the third step. We are now ready immediately to write down this canonical form. So canonical form, canonical form can be written already. Uh, it looks like, usually it looks like uh, lambda 1 times 1, y1 one squared plus lambda 2 times uh, y2 squared is equal to 1. We need all we need to do just to substitute our lambdas minus y1 squared plus 9 y2 squared is equal to 1. And that's it. And you immediately recognize that this is the uh, formula, canonical form of hyperbola. Maybe you will, you wish to rewrite it in a more you know precise way. So we we it would be better to put this term in the first place and put a place uh, one over nine under and minus y one uh, divided by one. But it's not absolutely necessary. Judging by this tutorial sheet where you have answers, these answers are quite acceptable because they are given answers in the same form. So don't bother uh, too much about it. We need this form, uh, hyperbola in this form, when we are asked to, uh, to plot the curve. But we are not asked the, uh, to plot the curve. That is why you can um, feel free to leave it in this form. It's already considered to be canonical. Okay. And so the next step, step four, is about founding finding uh, eigenvectors. This task is uh, familiar to you again. So let's do this task. So f1 and f2. f2 is the goal of step four. How did we do it? We use this beautiful equation, let me remind it to you, matrix A minus lambda i times identity and times our vector fi if i is equal to zero vector. So this was beautiful equation, which allowed us to calculate, to find these eigenvectors. But you know, uh, this, uh, uh, this expression means that just, uh, just one operation, just sub, uh, subtract lambdas from diagonal elements. And we already did it in our second step. Do you remember this matrix? So this matrix all, uh, always uh, already represents what we need. So I can just copy this matrix here. Uh -huh, let me copy it here. 1 minus lambda, 4, 4, 7 minus lambda. And f uh, i can be expanded as coordinates, x1, x2. And this is uh, the column of zeros as well. Uh -huh. So this, we just expanded our uh, equation, equation. And now we need to deal with just with this matrix. By the way, it's better to put, you know, sub substitute here just for mathematical rigorousness. Okay, now it start to find uh, to start dealing with this matrix one by one. So our first lambda was minus one, and now we need to substitute minus one instead of lambda y here, and it will be one minus minus one will be two four four eight. Mm -hmm. And if you remember uh, in the last tutorial, I gave you a, a shortcut as to how to find these eigenvectors in the case of two by two very quickly without Gaussian elimination. If you look uh, closely at your rows, you will realize that they are proportional. And if you remember that every row represents um, a separate equation, you will immediately realize that these are the same equations. That is why we, um, uh, we can use only one of them, which looks maybe smaller and prettier. And then after that, we can uh, get back to uh, the equation associated with this row. So it will be 2x1, plus 2x2 is equal to 0, right? Uh -huh. Of course, it's better to divide both sides by 2. Uh -huh. And I also prefer to express x1 in, in terms of x2, but it's not absolutely necessary. What is absolutely necessary is that you need to come up with um, uh, uh, two numbers, x1, x2, who, uh, which would satisfy this equation. 
So for example, if you put x2 equal to 1, you immediately get that x1 is equal to minus 2. Or some other people might come up with another pair of numbers. For example, if x2 is equal to 5, I don't know, this guy will be minus 10 and so on. So it doesn't matter. But use just the as small uh, as small numbers as uh, possible, but not never use a zero because eigenvector should be non-zero vector in the first place. That is why you are allowed to substitute any number here except for zero, of course. Okay, this uh, has been uh, this has been too many words. In other uh, in other words, we already found our vector f one. So the first coordinate is minus two. The second is one. So this is our first eigenvector. Mm -hmm. Let's move to the second lambda. Lambda 2 was equal to 9. Mm -hmm. So this time we need to look at this uh, uh, matrix again and put 9 instead of uh, lambda. So we'll get minus 8 here, minus 8, 4, 4. And here we have minus 2. Mm -hmm. And again, the same story. These uh, rows are proportional. Proportional. That is why, oh, let's, let's choose the second one this time. So 4x1 minus 2x2 is equal to 0. Again, it's very good to divide it by 2. And maybe it's better to express x2 in terms of the curve, just for the convenience. But you could uh, deal with this equation as well, no problem. So, and it looks like this time uh, we can uh, um, set x1 to 1, and x2 will be 2. Uh -huh. So vector f2, this accordance of vector F2, 1, 2. Uh -huh. So this is our second vector. You know, you, you can uh, do a little bit of checking, you know, because uh, there's too many, there are too many arithmetic uh, operations involved here, and uh, everyone is prone to casual mistakes, including me. So how to check that your result is correct? It turns out that these two vectors, uh, they should be orthogonal to each other. So it means that their, their uh, scalar product should be equal to zero. So let's check. So f1 times f2, uh, how do you calculate um, uh, scalar product? Uh, the first coordinate here times the first coordinate here. So minus 2 times 1 plus the second coordinate times this second coordinate times 2. Aha, uh -huh, it will be zero. So everything is correct so far at least. So it's not absolutely uh, uh, essential to do the checking. Maybe some, someone might say that, oh, it's just a waste of time. But I don't think it's a waste of time. It's always nice to know that, oh, I haven't made any mistakes yet. It's so nice, very inspiring. But it's up to you, of course. You don't need uh, to do it. OK, so it was uh, step four. We know uh, the uh, eigenvectors, but now we need to normalize them. So we need to. Normalize them, E1 was equal to F1 divided by F1 absolute value. So how to find the, uh, the length of the vector? Let me remind you that F1 uh, had coordinates minus 2, 1. Uh -huh. So uh, let me remind you. So the length of the vector was the square root of minus 2 squared plus 1 squared. And in our case, it will be square root of 5. Mm -hmm. So this was the uh, reminder of the formula. Okay, so we we have that vector e1. Every code, every component of this vector should be divided by this number, square root of 5. But you know, it's better to keep it outside of the matrix, outside this column, because it looks much more beautiful. Otherwise, uh, there would be too many fractions. Okay, so we did normalize the first vector. And uh, we need to do the same, the second vector. The second vector was f2, 1, 2. But you know, it has the same length, square root of 5. So we can easily write that uh, 1 divided by square root of 5 is in front. And here we need to write this vector. So that's it. This was um, step 5. And now step 6, which is not, ah, step 6. They don't ask us to uh, draw this uh, hyperbola, actually, explicitly. But I'm going to do uh, uh, it right now, nevertheless, just to give you the idea of how it should be done. Ah, you know what? Let's keep uh, step 6. Let's uh, do 7 and 8 step so that you get the impression that uh, that's how the task should be solved. And only, only after that, I will do step 6, uh, which is about plotting, OK? So uh, what is uh, step seven is about? Step seven is about uh, writing, uh, writing down the matrix, model matrix, model matrix. OK, model matrix is very easy one. And the first column is the coordinates of vector E1. 
and the second column is the coordinates of vector e2. But again, let's uh, keep this uh, annoying guy, this annoying fractor, fraction outside. 1 divided by square root of 5, and here we write the coordinates. So this is our first vector, and this is our second vector. It's much nicer to keep this uh, annoying term uh, outside, annoying factor outside. Okay, and now the time comes for the last step. Uh, they ask us explicitly to write new coordinates, to express new coordinates, which is y, in terms of the old coordinates. Uh -huh. So this is the equation we need to write and to uh, substitute our information. Okay, let's start with the left-hand side. It's y1, y2. This is a column 1, y2. Now we need to transpose this matrix. You know, this term will be in front anyway. Let me remind you, the transposing matrix is to, is to, means to uh, swap the rows of rows and columns. So, for example, minus 2, 1 was the first column, and now it becomes the first row. Uh -huh. And the same applies to the second column. 1, 2 was the second column, and now it becomes the second row. Uh -huh. So, this is our transposed matrix. And I keep this fraction outside as well. And what is the next uh, guy? Uh -huh. The next guy is x1, x2. So actually, it's already an answer, but according to the tutorial sheet answers, you need to expand this expression. So I mean that you need to uh, do this multiplication, but I think it's pretty easier. Let's just do it. Okay, I need to organize things on the screen again. So this is our result already. I'm oh, sorry. Do it this way. Uh -huh. And now we need to just to do all the multiplication. Uh -huh. So let's do it. So we are rewriting the left hand side y1 and y2 and i'm keeping this fraction outside as well and now of course you do you know how to do multiplication the first row here and this column here this column here should be multiplied so minus 2 x1 plus x2 this will be the first element in the first row and if we switch to the second row we'll get x1 and plus 2 x2 after multiplication so and you know what's more you can leave uh, answer in this form, but maybe it's a good idea even to uh, get back to the system of linear equations because matrices usually uh, represent uh, equations. So the first, uh, the first variable, new variable y1, will have this expression: one divided by square root of five minus two x1 plus x2, and the second correspondingly. Here's a similar expression, x1 plus 2x2. With, so that's it. I would give that say in this form, but you uh, feel free to leave it in this form. It doesn't matter. The most important thing is not to leave it in this form. You definitely need to expand, and uh, maybe this form is not acceptable at all. So it's better to do all these you know, operations. So this we are finished with our task. We are finished um you know doing what uh, they asked us to do but as a bonus you know as an additional material i want to uh, show you how to draw this uh, uh, how to draw this plot because maybe during the test or exam you might be asked to do this that is why it's better to be prepared so what do we uh, just let me rewrite our results here so we uh, from first uh, from step three we remember that we were having hyperbola hyperbola and I even rewrote it in a, a uh, nice way. So y2 squared divided by 1 minus y1 squared divided by 1 over 9, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I can't find this page already. Where did it? Oh, such a mess. <laughs> yeah, I think it was correct. It was correct. But let me check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was correct. No mistakes. And also, what uh, other information we need? We need these vectors, E1 and E2, because they determine the uh, direction of the curves. But you know, these vectors, here they are, by the way, they, their coordinates look a pretty, uh, little bit annoying because of this square root of 5. It won't be very convenient to plot these vectors. But you know what? This is why I think it's better to deal with vectors F1, F2, because they uh, determine the same direction. The only difference between vectors F and E is that vectors E are shorter. They have a, a length of uh, equal to 1, while these vectors are definitely longer. So, But nevertheless, they determine this direction. So let me copy my vectors F1 instead of E1. Into, so F1 was minus 2, 1, and F2 was 1, 2. Mm -hmm. So that is why 
uh, we start uh, uh, drawing our coordinate, old coordinate system in the first place. So x1 and x2 should be here. Uh -huh. So the next step is to plot our vectors f1, f2, as I said, instead of e1, e2. How to plot uh, vectors if we, uh, we have their coordinates? Very easy. So let's look, have a look at the first vector. The first component is minus 2, so you need to mark minus 2 here along x1 axis. Uh -huh, sorry. And the second component is 1. It means that we mark 1 here. And so this point with these coordinates will be the end point of the vector f1. So this is going to be vector f1. Mm -hmm. And the same technique we apply to the second vector. So the first component is 1, so we make 1 here. But the second component is 2 this time. So 2, and this is the end point of another vector, f2. Aha. Uh -huh. And as you can see, they are uh, orthogonal. They are orthogonal. OK, the next step is will be to expand these vectors because they determine, so this vector determines y2 and this vector determines the direction of y1 so this yellow one is our new coordinate system system and when we we, uh, we will start drawing our uh, hyperbola we need to look only to this yellow axis just completely ignore these um, black ones they are uh, they are only confusing us but what can you do you you need to represent them both so do you remember our first step uh, how, as to how uh, to plot hyperbola? The first step was to determine A and B. So B is uh, the uh, coefficient which is under uh, Y2. So our B is equal to 1. And this is coefficient under Y1. This is A squared, actually. So our A is equal to 1 over 3. So now we need to um, build this uh, rectangle. Do you remember? So A is equal uh, to 1 over 3 goes here. This will be uh, minus 1 third, and this will be plus 1 third. It's not very comfortable, you know, to draw uh, this, uh, you know, A and Bs in this uh, messy picture, but what can you do? We couldn't ignore this old coordinate system, unfortunately, and we couldn't ignore these vectors. So we just, uh, you know, place everything here. Okay, so now B, B should be plotted along uh, y, uh, y axis, Y2 axis. So, uh, plus 1 here and minus 1 here. And so that's how we get this rectangle. Uh, very messy pictures, very messy picture. We needed this rectangle to get these diagonals. Diagonal 1 and diagonal 2. Maybe it's just a coincidence that it's uh, like this. So very messy. Picture is getting even messier. And now we need to determine the vertices of our hyperbola. So uh, let's get back to the equation. So this term has a uh, it has positive sign. It means that vertices will be marked along y2 axis. Where's y2? y2 is this axis. That is why it will be the first vertex, vertex, and this will be the second vertex. And finally, we are ready to plot our hyperbola. Uh, looks terrible, just I know, but what can you do? So these are two branches of our hyperbola. And I'm trying, uh, so these red lines, these red lines were asymptotes. That is why the hyperbola should, you know, try to go as close to this asymptote as possible, and as well as this branch. So this is our plot. Maybe this is the reason why they uh, didn't ask you to plot the, uh, to plot the curve, because this, you know, sometimes the plot becomes really messy. So that is why uh, once you, start uh, reading the test uh, next Wednesday, I suppose it will be next Wednesday. Just read carefully what you are asked to do. Maybe you won't be asked to uh, plot the curve because it's very time consuming and not all people are very good, you know, artists, you know, when it comes to drawing. That is why maybe the reason they don't ask you to do this. So read the assignment carefully. Just. Okay, so that's it for today. Good luck with your test. So see you, see you in our next tutorial. Bye-bye.